Hello, everybody. My name's Dennis Rutledge. I'm Public Relations Manager for McMullen's Brewery in Hartford, England. We are a traditional family brewery, still owned by the McMullen family. We have been brewing beer for 168 years. We're going to take you on a trip round our brewery. We have two breweries, the new one which was built in 1983 and the old original brewery which was built in 1891. You're going round a real traditional British brewery. Aren't you lucky? Come with me. Meanwhile, cheers. <laughs> Our beer trek of England continues to East Anglia and Hartford, home to one of Britain's most traditional breweries, McMullins. We trekked through the streets of Hartford in search of the old brew house, where a formal tour awaited us. We did. Good. Good. Morning, everybody. Morning. Oh, good. The Beer Trek special on video report continues as we are in a pub and find our Beer Trekkers drinking coffee and eating biscuits. What is this? Heresy in Hartford. Heresy. Push off. Less than 50 years ago, there were 45 breweries in Hertfordshire. Today there is one, McMullen and Sons Limited, the Hertfordshire family brewer, carrying on the tradition of brewing fine Hertfordshire cask condition I am sure. Um, one could go on any for night with figures at the turn of the century, 1900, there were over 8,600 breweries in England. Today there's 92. That's the way the brewing industry has changed. And to find an independent family one like McMullins is very special indeed, of course, you know. But out with it, that, there is the entire selection there of everything which we manufacture here at the brewery day by day. Including, of course, our wonderful, marvellous McMullen original AK. The oldest beer we brew, the biggest selling beer that we brew, the, the flagship brand of the company. The beer that Hertfordshire is famous for, as they say, you know. Hertfordshire Champagne, it's been called, and quite right too, you know. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful beer. And yet, having said all that about the product, of course, it is a product which is totally shrouded in mystery as to why it's called AK and how long have we been brewing it. How those two initials ever got used in the first place, we simply do not know. And nor does anybody else in the brewing industry. It's rather strange in as much that <coughs> McMullins are not the only people that brew a beer called AK. Over the years, there have been dozens of breweries that have done so, and nobody in the industry can categorically say what those two initials stand for. Lots of people tell us what they think they stand for, and some are a lot more polite than others, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've heard them all, never fear, every one of them. No doubt we invented most of them anyway, you know. But what they actually mean, nobody knows. How long have McMullen's been brewing, AK? We really don't know, but we think we've been brewing it 163 years. Now, there are not many beers about in this country today that can boast that kind of heritage, you know. 
just think in our own lifetimes the beers that have disappeared off the face of the market gone and never to be seen again probably and, and some wonderful beers amongst them you know and yet there's dear old AK still going strong after 163 years you know why has it stood the test of time quite simply of course it's the quality of the brewing materials that we use in the first place it has always been the company policy at McMullen's that we use nothing but the very finest quality brewing materials money can buy. That's not to say that other brewers don't, but other brewers wouldn't dream of using those super quality materials in their ordinary everyday session beer, which is basically what AK is after all. They would save them and they would use them in their specialist beers and so forth. But at McMullen we use the same quality in everything. And it's the old, old story, isn't it? Quality tells. It's as simple as that, really. Well, we're now going to have a walk around the brewery. Before we do, there's one or two points I must make to you. Uh, we now come under all the auspices, believe it or not, the EC, the European Community. We get down the bottom later on and we have to put on hats and coats to walk around the brewery. Yeah? I can see you're good. Yeah, May I take your order, sir? A Big Mac, a fry, and a Coke? You might throw my button up. Beer Trek, special undercover investigation continues. We find beer trekkers, Jeff and Dave, at the Glenland Brewery disguised as Shriners. The trash is hotel room. <laughs> In 1974, the whole of the British brewing industry was going through an incredible revolution. Eric will remember the Red Revolution, Red Barrel, Cake Beer, and all this sort of thing. You know, these beautiful cast condition beers. Nobody was going to make them anymore. Everybody was switching over to Cake Beer. And that really was the way the trade was changing in those days. And Mullins certainly weren't going to miss out on it. We invested just over a million pounds to put in all the plants and the equipment to get involved in keg beer. Cast conditioned beer is, is in a container and you put, it, you, you put a tap in the container, you connect a pipe to it and you pull the beer out of the cask by means of a pump. And the beer that is in there is a living beer, it's still got the yeast in it so it's still maturing in the cask, it's, it's called cast conditioned beer therefore. Keg beer, well as far as we're concerned, that is cast conditioned beer which has been pasteurised and filtered it is then put in a container in which you pump CO2 into it to push the beer out and you open the valve here and, and out it comes of course. You know. Those two products of course have got a lot longer shelf life than these because they are inert uh, products. These are live living beers and of course unfortunately live things tend to die. It's coming to all of us believe you me. You know. um, but cask, uh, keg beers of course have, have a much longer lifespan and so forth. And that's the basic difference between the two. Well, that was in 1978, the same year, incidentally, we put up our first two modern fermenting vessels, conical fermenters, they're called. The reason for putting them up? Lager. Lager was beginning to become incredibly important in this country. To give you some idea, the total sales of lager in 1978 was equivalent to 8% that of beer. Today, it's equivalent to 51% that of beer. We actually do drink more lager in the UK today than we do our own home-produced beers, you know. Inside, as you can imagine, it's the most modern, up-to-date, technically advanced brew house anywhere in the country. And yet every process that goes on in that ultra-modern brewery today is the identical hand control processes that still go on in the old brewery. There isn't a computer in the place. We still rely on the skill and the care and the craftsmanship of the brewers working down there, the same as their grandfathers, their great-grandfathers, their great-grandfathers did before them, you know. You mentioned that um, you use a, a, a great deal of malt in your beers. In, no, in that particular beer, AK. An AK. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a very malty beer. Does that mean that you don't use any brewing sugar in your in the wort? Um, no, we, we, we won't use as much brewing sugar. The same with our lagers. Now, we add brewing sugar to Hartsman, but we don't add brewing sugar to Steingold because we put a tremendous amount of malted barley, so all the, all the alcohol from there is coming from the sugars in the malted barley. Right, right. Which makes it a very special beer. Right? Makes it very malty and, and thicker rather yeah, than... Yeah, uh, absolutely. It's a much bigger flavour, far continental, big continental flavours about it. And that's what you mean by quality as opposed to a lot of brewers who are saving money by using sh more sugar and exactly, less barley? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, everything's tradition, a whole lot. Right? Even with modern lagers, we're brewing them in the old traditional way. That's true, you are.
What is it? East Kent Goldings. The best money can buy. Obviously. That's the premier uh, finishing hop in the British Isles. Almost anywhere you're making ales. East Kent Goldings. Side with copper. Size wise, you'd get one in this room just about, but you need another couple of stories to stand it up. <coughs> and the mystery about them is, well, we don't actually know how old they are. Because in 1891, when they built the new brewery, they bought them second hand from another brewer that was closing down. Had them reinstalled in our brewery, they still stand there today, and every one of those wonderful beers you've seen there, they are all fermented out in these lovely old wooden and copper fermenting vessels. You know. 1891, this was all built. It's the original copper house of the old brewery. There's two coppers, a large one and a small one. There's the underback here on my right. There's the hot back behind you there. Now they are all exactly the same vessels as those enormous stainless steel ones we saw across the road in the new brewery. And they do exactly the same job. And the nicest part of the story, they still do that job. You are in a working brewery, a living museum. We still brew in here. And it will go on being so for many years to come because that's the way the family want it to be. That's how it is. And, you know, it's like the old American saying, it ain't busted, kid, don't mend it. You know, it's as simple as that. Really. They are, um, we fancy that we are taking care of our future by looking after the past. I think we're very fortunate we're able to do it. I think likewise, we're all very fortunate we're able to come and see it all. That it hasn't all been knocked down and broken and so forth. I've heard um, your brewery described as a tower brewery, which is a traditional uh, kind of brewery, and I'd like to have you explain what exactly that means. What is a tower brewery? Well, as you've seen, you've got a picture of the brewery, which you took earlier on, and in the middle of it, there is a big tower. It goes up four or five stories. Victorian breweries were always built in that way because the original ingredients, the hops, the malted barley, the liquor, water as we call it, uh, was kept right at the top of the tower and everything would happen by gravity. You didn't need, but you need pumps to get it up there in the first place. But from then on it would come down floor by floor by floor. And as you've seen this morning, you're going around even in the new brewery, we still adopt that process, particularly in the mill. It all starts at the top and then it comes down the second floor, the third floor, the fourth floor. Um, and that's basically, it is a tower. Uh, and that's how they got the name, Tower Breweries. Simple as that. Mullen Original AK. Beautiful. There it is. Thank you, sir. AK. Nobody knows what it means. Suppose it doesn't matter. Beautiful coppery hue to it. Good malty beer. It's got some nice caramel bitterness. Gets you right on the back of the mouth. Really nice bitter, although I believe Michael Jackson has called it more of a light mild. You can't disagree with a man, but I still find it a nice bitter. Cheers. Uh, country bitter, but this is from the cask. The other beer was pasteurized. But, uh, this one, the hops are really big time, but they're more in the um, in the flavor. The vault is huge. But for some reason, I don't get as much of the uh, uh, late edition hops, but it doesn't detract from this beer. This beer has all, all the other accoutrements that go with a fine beer. Don't ask me to spell accoutrement. 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 I actually prefer the bottled beer in this case. They just spell it as finely going on. <laughs> this is McMullen's own. Uh, strong, hard barley wine from the bottle. 
It has a beautiful deep ruby red color and a beautiful malty aroma. This is definitely going to be a good beer. It starts out sweet, malty, and warming in the middle and finishes us a little bit harsh and bitter. Maybe can use a little bit more uh, bitterness. I mean, a little more aging to, to soften that bitterness. It's an excellent beer and um, definitely worth worth drinking. It's a great beer. Well, we enjoyed the tour. Thank you very much. You've been wonderful, and uh, your beer is wonderful also. Super. Well, it's lovely to see you all. It really is. Um, if I'm ever in Honolulu, Hawaii, or wherever, I'll be there with my glass of McMullen's original AK saying cheers, God bless. Nice to see you all. Enjoy the original AK at McMullen and Sons in Hartford or try a bottle now available in the States. We next trekked by train to the English countryside where we discovered to our dismay that pubs adhered to old drinking hours and were closed in the afternoon. Please. I was pleased, sir. Can I have a pint? Please, sir. Can I have some more? We finally found an open pub, the appropriately named Struggling Man Inn. We struggled so much to get to Dur Dudley that we had to stop and have a pint in the Struggling Man Inn. We enjoyed our first taste of Banks Bitter from an electric pump. <coughs> The Special Investigative Report on Beer Trek now finds our two beer trekkers in the Struggling, Struggling Man pub drinking a pint. <gasps> What's what that? What is wrong here? What is wrong with that pint? <gasps> it is not a full pint. And they sit doing nothing. Shame. <laughs> what? What's that? A camera badge on your uniform? Take that off. Take it off. <laughs> so it, is, it is very nice. It's made by the uh, Banks Brewery, which uh, used to be the Wolverhampton and uh, Dudley Breweries. Uh, Dudley Brewery was closed. The combined Dudley Brewery was closed. Uh, but this is still dominates the area as far as um, time houses go. <laughs> Well, it's, it's funny to get back to a smooth... Is there a problem with the camera there, Jeff? the belly bum. Cider straight from the barrel. Cider? Clouds in a glass. It's more like smeg in a glass. David, would, would you like to try it? No, that's, that's <laughs> I'll, I'll stick with my, my own. Uh, Thanks, <laughs> the Struggling Man Pub was a welcome refuge for our beer trekkers, but don't drink the cider. Finally, the Beacon Hotel, home to Sarah Hughes Brewery. operating hotel, Sarah Hughes is famous for their award-winning Dark Mild. Is the beer good here? Is the beer good? Hmm? Is it? So yes. Yeah. Please, sir, can I have some more? Another beer trick undercover investigative exclusive. 
Beer checkers are seen on a train during pub hours. But are they drinking? Damn right they are. I see what they are. We are. We've come from Sarah Hughes Brewery. And uh, we're on the way back to London. And we're drinking their award-winning for many years. They're mild. Now, mild, you might ask. And it's not this beer, by the way. But it's uh, a 6% mild. Now, how can a mild be 6%? because a mild is uh, just lightly hopped and this beer is lightly hopped so let's taste it shall we excellent beer the alcohol comes out at you as does uh, some of the unique malts the dark malts they put in it however it's a little bit disguised by the pewter I happen to be drinking out of we need to ask somebody drinking that out of pewter I hope there's someone not drinking out of pewter, pewter. But I'm drinking out of a Marston's coffee cup, so it's all right. Yes, it is. Got this at the brewery, this the Burton Union system. Anyways, back to the beer. Oh. The alcohol kind of takes your breath away, but it's not harsh. It's very, well, it's, it's mild. It's, it's gentle alcohol. You know there's a lot of alcohol in there, but it becomes a part of a uh, flavor component. It doesn't overpower the rest of the beer. It makes it kind of a dry mild. Dr. Norton, how would you brew a beer that high in alcohol, uh, yet have it be a mild? I'd use that yeast to start with, which we're going to do because we have bottles, uh, bottle condition beer. The yeast is in the bottle. We're going to work that yeast up. And then we're going to use a uh, uh, lightly hopped dark extract of a gravity of about probably 1064 and it's going to work down to about uh, 1012 uh, maybe 1014 it's a very unusual beer uh, most miles are very lightly uh, light in alcohol but uh, history says that it did brew miles much bigger than that and this in fact is the strongest mile being brewed in London this in England, you mean? In England, yes. yes. All right. I think we need to talk to someone who drinks a little bit bigger vessel. Is there anyone who drinks a little bit bigger vessel here? Right here, Sonny. Oh, there he is. Hey! <laughs> well, I'm drinking a little bit of moonshine here. Well, it could be moonshine. It's strong enough that uh, 6% is this hardly a mile. But um, uh, my mile doesn't really describe this beer at all. It's, uh, it's actually a big beer. It's big, alcoholic, great flavor, um, a big surprise too. Um, I really like this beer, and uh, Sarah Hughes Brewing did a good job on it. So we give it one jug up? One jug up. All right. Sarah Hughes Unique Strong Dark Mild is equally enjoyed at the brewery or on the train. Next, a trek to Cambridge, and where there's college students, you're sure to find beer. First stop, a brew pub, the Ancient Druids. Unfortunately, their home-brewed beer was a bit off due to the extreme heat of summer. Since this pub was owned by Charles Wells, a brewery in Bedford, we decided to give their IPA a try. How's that one there, North? Looking Charles Wells Eagle IPA. Very good. All right. Jeff, how's that one? Nice beer. Yeah, on the cool side, however. Nice hop aroma. Nice chewy texture to it. Ancient Druids is popular with college students both for their own brew and Charles Wells Ales. Next, we stopped at the Globe Ale House. Unlike Derby, pubs in Cambridge are open all day. We decided to try my namesake, Brain's Best Bitter from Cardiff, Wales. Globe Ale House, Cambridge, welcome. I'm drinking Brain's Best Bitter. 
Brainless Bitter. And uh, the slogan is, it's brains you want. Am I right? It is brains you want. Nice aroma to it, nice bitter hot finish. A good bit of malt in it. Um, kind of dry. I get really pissed on this one, I bet. We've got uh, Brains Best Bitter, and their slogan is, it's me you want. My brain hurt, but the brains was excellent. The Zebra features Green King Ales, the largest brewery in East Anglia, and their wonderful, strong Abbott Ale. Zebra. The Zebra. Zebra. Cambridge. Uh, Abbott Ale. By Green King. Lots of late edition hops here. I'll be five, ten minutes from the end of the boil. Very fruity. Plenty of malt. It's a beautiful beer. Um, I don't know if it's a succession beer. It's a little too strong for that. But of course, you know, as Americans, we, we don't know any better. So we make the succession beer. All right. Could make it a session beer, but it is 5% alcohol by volume. Uh, very nice beer. This is the first Green King I think we've had. It is one of the big six brewers in the country, but compared to Bass, you know, there's quantity wise, there's no comparison. Nice fruity beer with a lingering, lingering fruitiness on the palate. Uh, an excellent beer. Is it fruity now? It was very, very fruity. Another cotton. It was very, very fruity. You can get this from certain kind of hops, but it has a slight tobacco leaf character. Which isn't bad, but it's very unusual. It's very, very fruity. Fruity Green King Ales from Suffolk can be enjoyed at the Zebra Pub. Our final stop, the 1994 Camera Pub of the Year, the St. Radigand. Dubbed the smallest pub in England, it makes up for size with a global decor, postcards from around the world. The landlord gave us a rare glimpse of the cellar room where the real ales are kept. You turn that, you turn that off, this one's a bug, you turn this off, you crack the bloody thing in, yeah? You crack the mask in, turn this tap off. When that one runs out, you undo the top, that one's got a hole in it. So I'm going right. to it. Right. And you pull the needle out, take it out of there, and you put the needle back in this one, take the top of it and screw it down. So this, this one, this one has got a trombone. It's, it'll go down to here. And this is catching the top of the... When you get half an hour, you push it down. When it hits the bottom, when it hits the bottom, just pull it up about this much from the bottom, away from the sludge, and that's it. That's settling, and the other one's set. So when, when you run out of another one, when one goes, then you transfer that, take off that, that needle to there, take that out and smack the next one, let that breathe for a couple of days. When you got the, one of these, you probably That's uh, full. You tapped it, yeah, and, and let a little gas off and then tighten it up again. Yeah, leave it to breathe, leave the breathe, tighten it up. That one's, when that's empty, I'll use that one. Uh, when that one goes, I'll tap another one. You've always got one right. area. It's always working, this is real early, you know. Simplified system, but that's it. To top off our beer trek, I was honored to accept a bottle of World Traveler Vale Ale. Raise your right hand. Yes. Please, sir. Please ask me. Will you take this bottle to Hawaii? I will take this bottle to Hawaii. You will not drink it. No. Oh. I will not. Yes, Chris. Okay. I will not drink it. And will you find a suitable kindred spirit in a bar in Hawaii to carry a bottle? I will find a suitable kindred spirit.